So by the end of this talk, I want you to remember just one thing. And that thing is that Copernicus was right. So that might sound a little bit weird, but keep that in mind. Today, I want to share with you about a dream that I achieved earlier this year. It's not a huge dream, but I've learned many things through this journey of achieving that dream. I've learned that our dreams should be all about people. Today, I want to talk about that from a few different angles. First of all, everything that we're trying to achieve through our dream needs to be focused on people. Second, in order to realize our dream, we need to surround ourselves with the right people. And lastly, we need to be the right person ourselves. So earlier this year, I wrote this book called The Happy Student, Five Steps to Academic Fulfillment and Success. So you can see two book covers there, and I have two editions of the book. The one on the left is the US edition, and the one on the right is the Asian edition. My ego isn't so big that I insisted that we have a big picture of me on the front cover of the book, but my publisher said that we would be able to sell more books that way. So I don't know why he said that. But <laughs> so the main reason I wrote the book was to try and help students find new meaning and motivation in their academics. My motivation for writing it was that for most of my life as a student, I wasn't a happy one. I achieved a lot of academic success, but the more success I achieved, the more pressure I felt to perform. I went through a period as a teenager where I was extremely low on self-esteem, self-confidence. I felt so anxious and stressed all the time. And I remember being so depressed that I would cry myself to sleep at night. It was a very difficult time for me. And it was only before going to university that I began asking myself again and again what the purpose of education is and what the right approach students should have towards education. I don't want students to make the same mistakes that I made in the blind pursuit of success. That's why I decided to put all of my thoughts and reflections down in this book, The Happy Student. When I did some market research before embarking on this book project, I realized that there isn't a single book on the market that aims to help students find fulfillment and happiness in their student life. Every book on the market in this category is all about helping you to become a straight A student, not about helping you to become a happy student. So when I told my friends that the title of my book is The Happy Student, they said to me that that's an oxymoron. They said it's a nonsensical title. There's no such thing as a happy student. They said that saying happy student is like saying hot ice cream or cold sauna. It just doesn't make sense. They said to me, smart students, smart students exist. Hardworking students, those exist too. But happy students, I don't see any of those around. So if you're a happy student here today, or if you used to be a happy student, would you wave at me? Ah, oh, I'm glad to see quite a lot of hands. <laughs> oh, I'll read my book. Yeah. Thanks, must be. <laughs> So when I was trying to get the book published, there were some of my friends who weren't very encouraging. They said things like, come on, who gets a book published when you're 20-something years old? And there were other people who said to me, which publisher would want to publish a book on education written by someone who's still a student himself? So I began to doubt myself, and there were times that I definitely felt like giving up. And when I was trying to get the book published, I decided to just start sending the manuscript and the proposal to lots of agents and publishers anyway. And I got rejected many times. So here's a timeline that shows you how the happy student finally got published. And I looked into my old emails to find the exact dates. So on November 3rd, 2010, that's when I had my first submission to a publisher. And I received my first rejection on November 18th. And the second one came soon after, then the third, then the fourth, and then pretty much opened the floodgates. And finally, 
on February 25th, 2011. That's when a publisher in the US called Morgan James decided that they wanted to take on this book project. So that's been my journey of achieving my dream. And it was a lot of hard work that was involved because after I wrote the first draft of the manuscript, I revised that manuscript at least 20 times and I was so bored of reading my own writing by the end of that process. And when the publishing deadline drew near, I spent eight hours a day writing for two months. So that's been my challenge of getting this book published. And it was the long-term vision that kept me going through this whole process. It was about focusing on my purpose for why I embarked on this project in the first place. My mission in writing this book, and I wrote this down before I wrote the book, is to empower others with the mindset and methods to lead a meaningful and marvelous life. I'm not saying that the end result isn't important whenever you embark on a goal or pursue one of your dreams, but I am saying that it's much more important to have the right purpose and motivation right from the get-go. I really want to make a difference in the arena of education. And I can honestly say that even if I only sold 10 copies of this book, I still would have no regrets writing this book in the first place. What I discovered for myself is this, that the value of the dream is more important than the probability of success. What I mean by this is that the determining factor for whether or not you choose to pursue your dream should be how valuable and meaningful that dream is to you. It's not so much about how likely it is that you will eventually succeed. If you pursue a meaningful dream of yours, it's not just the destination that matters. What matters much more is the lives that you're touching along the way. Your dream is only a valuable one when people are at the center of it. I recently read about this rule called the 18-40-60 rule. And the older I get, the more true I think it is. The first part of the rule says this. When you're 18, you worry about what everybody is thinking of you. When you're 40, you don't care what anybody thinks of you. And when you're 60, you realize that nobody has been thinking about you at all. And isn't that true? Because most of the time we're thinking about ourselves, not about other people, right? It's only when people are at the center of your dream that you'll be able to deal with all the negative feedback and the criticism that you're bound to receive when you choose to pursue your dream. It's only when people are at the center of your dream that you'll be able to push through all of those times when you feel discouraged and when it's such a struggle for you. But it's not always easy to pursue a people-centered dream. One reason is this. We think that there's a limited amount of pie in the world. So we try to get as big a piece of the pie as possible for ourselves. We think that if other people are successful, at a subconscious level, we feel like it makes our own success less likely. You remember that time when you were in school and your friend did better than you on that exam. And do you remember feeling not too happy about it? I know that I've definitely felt that way before. In this big picture of making the world a better place, there's more than enough success to go around. Every time we think of trying to get a bigger piece of the pie for ourselves, then we're in survival mode. We're just trying to survive in this world. But if we want to thrive, then we need to change our focus. We need to focus on baking a bigger pie. Baking a bigger pie is about creating more value for everyone so that there's more pie to go around. Baking a bigger pie is about focusing on contribution, not on achievement. And it's not about focusing on how much success we can hoard for ourselves. For a long time, I wanted to get a book published. This was before I even had an idea of what content I would put inside of this book. And this thought of mine, this idea of trying to get a book published, for a long time, it was just a goal. Setting this goal was all about my achievement, my capabilities, my satisfaction, my hard work. 
this goal wasn't focused on other people. It was only when I started concentrating on how this book could be used as a tool to empower other people and add value to their lives that this goal became a dream. Dreams go beyond our own expectations, our own abilities, our own accomplishments. Dreams even go beyond our lifetimes. Dreams can never just be about us, and we can never achieve our dreams on our own. We need other people. So how can we be someone who doesn't just dream big dreams, but who turns those dreams into a reality? Once again, it's all about people. So first of all, we need to ensure that our dream is a people-centered one. Next, we need to surround ourselves with the right people. I've heard it said that you're the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. This isn't a scientific fact, but if you think about it, it's a general rule that is true. If you're continually hanging out with people who are toxic, who are always negative, they're complaining, they're gossiping, you're going to become like them eventually. And on the other hand, if you're always hanging out with people who are passionate, caring, generous, kind, you're going to become like them eventually as well. So if you want to discover your dream and achieve it, you need to surround yourself with the right people. And if there are toxic people in your life, I encourage you to set some distance between you and them. And this isn't an easy decision to make, but it's a necessary one. For me, I'm very close to my family, and I'm extremely thankful to them because they are the ones who encouraged me to push through and get the book published even when I had lost hope. They believed in me even when I didn't fully believe in myself. So if you want to achieve a meaningful dream, first of all, you need to ensure that that dream is a people-centered one. And second, you need to surround yourself with the right people. Lastly, you need to be the right person yourself. Here's one of my favorite quotes of all time. It's an anonymous one. It goes, many succeed momentarily by what they know. Some succeed temporarily by what they do. Few succeed permanently by what they are. Permanent success is all about character. It's about what you are and it's about who you are. Are you a person of integrity? Do you keep your promises? Do you genuinely care about other people? Do you show respect to people regardless of their educational qualifications or their social status or their wealth? These are the kinds of traits that will ensure your permanent success. As we begin to wrap up this talk for today, I want to leave you with four questions to ask yourself. And these four questions pretty much sum up my talk for today. The first one is, are people at the center of my dream? The second one is, am I pursuing a dream or is it just a goal? Am I surrounding myself with the right people? And lastly, am I the right person myself? I encourage you to write these questions down and to spend some time thinking about them when you get home. So remember at the beginning of this talk, I told you to remember just one thing, that Copernicus was right. So allow me to explain. The biggest lesson that I've learned on this journey so far is something that Copernicus discovered more than 400 years ago. 400 years ago, Copernicus discovered that the Earth revolves around the Sun. Up until that point in time, everyone believed that the Sun revolved around the Earth. People believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. But Copernicus proved that all these beliefs were incorrect, and he proved that the Earth goes around the Sun. Sometimes I think that we have a similar kind of thinking in our personal lives. We ask ourselves questions like, how am I feeling today? Am I hungry? Am I tired? How am I doing in my academics? How am I doing in my career? Am I popular? Am I good looking? And I'm sure some of you right now are asking the question, am I enjoying this TEDx talk right now? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
to live with a sense of mission and purpose, we need to get beyond ourselves. It's something that I'm learning to do every day because I know that it's far too easy to think self-centered thoughts all the time. I'm not saying that it's not important to think about yourself or to develop yourself because the first step, if you want to build a better career, a better family, a better life, a better education system, a better healthcare system, a better government, and a better world, the first step is to build a better you. So your life is about you, but it's not mainly about you. Your dreams are about you, but they're not mainly about you. I hope you'll remind yourself every day that Copernicus was right. The world doesn't revolve around me, and the world doesn't revolve around you. Our biggest dreams are only made meaningful because of other people. People, sweet dreams are made of this. Thank you.